Oh, hello. It is Take Charge Tuesday. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Beth Copeland with Georgia Christian Business Network, and we are putting God back in business. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us. We have a full house here on Zoom. I am so excited about today. We have a great opportunity to share with you and it's an outstanding individual. We have the, listen, top-notch presenter. I am so excited to be on this platform today with Crystal Parker. Crystal, welcome to Georgia Christian Business Network Take Charge Tuesday Power Call. Come on, Beth. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Listen, it is customary for us throughout the months or weeks leading up to the presentation to always introduce our speakers and our presenters, to give you background, credibility, tell you who they are, what they do. But when we bring them to the platform, you get to hear it from their heart. And so, Crystal, what I'd like to do is extend an opportunity before we get started just to share a little about your background, who you are, what you do, and why we should really care. <laughs> Wow. Well, thank you so much, Beth. Oh, gosh, I love your energy and I am oh so excited to be here today to be a part of this, uh, bringing the Georgia Christian Business Network together with the Central Florida Christian Chamber of Commerce. And uh, what'd you say? I love it, Beth. Putting God back in business. Putting oh, God back in business. Oh, so good. Yes. I'm honored to be yes. here. Um, got a rich background in business, uh, corporate executive for oil and gas. Um, I've, I've got definitely some education uh, behind my name. I'll tell you a little bit more about my story uh, when I get uh, started here. But I just want to honor you, Beth, for, for following the calling that God's placed in your heart and for gathering people and sharing the good news in the business landscape, because business is brutal and it's tough out there. And uh, you're putting ethics and values of Christ back in business. And so I know that what you do is not easy and it is hard work, but it's good work. And I wanna honor you. Oh my God, you're so awesome. I love you. I, 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 I. Yeah, as my grandbaby would say, hug, hug, hug. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, encouraging. Listen, y'all, I'm a crybaby, so it's taking <laughs> everything I got not to just be over here in tears. Listen, there's a little perpetration going on here because I'm telling you, that touches my heart to mm. hear um, when someone appreciates and values what you do. Because listen, sometimes ministry, can we be honest? Can we be real? It's a thankless situation happening there, okay? But thank you so much. But it's my pleasure. I got that from Chick-fil-A, but I mean that with all my heart. <laughs> it is my pleasure to serve God and his people. And you know, you said you like my energy and everything. You know what brings me energy is when I run into and I meet and God connects everybody do you understand divine connection? Mm -hmm. When I say God has a plan and your response is, and I am a part of it, then that means that you buy into it as well, that you understand that God has a plan and I'm a part of that plan. And when he brings people into your path, like he has assigned to you, stop running after people that God hasn't assigned to you. He assigned mm -hmm. Krista Parker to me. And, and I know that. There are people and you'll know it. But listen, this isn't my show today. This is Crystal Parker's show. Uh, she has an God outstanding, God. it is God, because we gave mm -hmm. it to him, didn't we, Crystal? Yeah, we gave is. him. We said, what, in fact, when I prayed, that's what I said. This is mm -hmm. your show. Yeah. Right. But he uses us as vessels, doesn't he? Won't mm -hmm. he use you if you allow him to use you? And so Crystal is his vessel today, that you do his bidding. And so you're going to talk to us about elevation through submission. This is the one thing that I want to share to those that are not so familiar with Georgia Christian Business Network. This year, we're focused on the year of elevation, elevation 2022. And we're not just pulling something out of the sky and just throwing it at you. Last year, we focused on hashtag comeback. 
And boy, did we ever experience a combat. It, it, be careful what you ask for. So this year, what we wanted to position for our GCBM members and sponsors is an opportunity to hear what God spoke to me and August Crystal at our GC, GGG, GCBN's GGG God Golfing Girls sixth annual conference at Chateau Elan in the midst of the hype of it all. When I said, God, thank you. We're experiencing a comeback. And he said to me, now here we are, 47, we had 50 registered, 47 present women at Chateau Elan, which was our greatest number, outstanding resort in Brazelton, Georgia. You have to look it up. Okay. And this, what I thought was the hype of what GGG and God said, this isn't it. Next year, I want you to focus on elevation. I felt it, it clearly in my heart. Now, is it not scary? Yes, because see what happens sometimes, and this is why we had to align the platform where powerful presenters, men and women of God mm -hmm. that could bring forth and help us to help people to understand what God said to me that day. Elevation is a an event necessarily, or a place that you arrive. And so he worked with me, he gave to me a definition, a working definition that we've embraced here at GCBN of what elevation is. And it's a continual ascension in your mind mm -hmm. and aligning your feet to follow the path that is outlined. And so when I talk with Crystal, <laughs> It resonated with her spirit, man. And today she's presenting to us on the topic, submission through elevation. Thank you and welcome again, my sister. Wow, wow, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm honored. I'm honored to close this series for you. Um, and I really think that what God's downloaded for me to share with everyone in here today is actually gonna blow your mind. He blew my mind with it. I know that when Beth and I were talking, and again, a divine appointment that we walked into and just spent that time and just asked, how can we serve each other? And what does that look like? She said, elevation. And the first word, when people say elevation, the first word that comes to your mind for me was submission. Now that sounds absolutely crazy, but God showed me exactly how I can help you understand why submission is the only way to elevate your business in, wow. 20, in 2022. I wanted to say welcome. I see so many of our Christian Chamber members uh, in the Zoom, on the platform, and at Palm Beach Atlantic University in the Orlando campus. So I see you all. Thank you for being here. This is so beautiful to bring these groups together. And uh, I'm just going to open in prayer, if that's okay, Beth, just to By me. just bring, ask, and invite God in for this presence here. And Lord, we just thank mm -hmm. you, Father. We thank you for technology that we're able to connect and uh, and that there be no barriers there be no boundaries to your message and to your word that can go out all over the nation all over the world that lord i just pray today that you use me as the vessel that i am here to deliver a message that i believe that that you want your people to hear. And so mm -hmm. I thank you for waking me up in the middle of the night, several nights. I thank you for downloading these words. And I just pray, Lord, that, that you've told me that the teacher will arrive when the student is ready. And so, Father, I pray that your students are ready because I know that you have taught me so much through this word. And I pray that I'm able to articulate your heart for your people in this time. Lord, open the ears to hear. Let me get out of the way so that you can shine in all things and all ways. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. What humility. Mm -hmm. We're excited. I, I are you guys excited? Send a chat if you are. Tell her you're excited. <laughs> yeah. I open every one of, I'm a professor, and I open every one of my ethics classes out with one question. Who are you? When you strip away everything that you've gathered and packed on that the world says that makes you successful, who are you really? 
And I would just in, encourage you as you're sitting here hearing me today, encourage you to think about that. Take away your title, take away your job, take away even your title of wife or mom or husband or father, grandpa, take away your car, take away the house that you've worked to build. And as you look into the mirror, completely vulnerable, who are you? I know for me that I was running from that question by piling on all the things the world said made me successful for so long that I didn't know who I was. I had worked in corporate. I was a college dropout. I left college with 21 hours left. Went back to the very small town that I came from, population 300, and I started over. And I started stocking shelves in a truck parts store as a temporary employee and a very broken person. And that's where God got a hold of me. And as I was stocking shelves and figuring out myself and figuring out business, I started to become very successful. I moved from place to place and job to job within a Fortune 199 oil and gas company. As a college dropout, I then went on and got my undergrad in psychology. I became the youngest executive in a Fortune 199 company. I was 34 years old, running the gas company on the west side of Texas, 47 cities, and all of customer service for Texas. And I continued to seek more. I felt in my spirit that I needed to go back and get my master's, even though my boss at the time told me, Parker, you're 34 years old. You've got it made. You don't need to do that. But something urged me. I got my master's. The company sent me to Harvard Business School for senior executive leaders. And I continued to grow. The more that I grew in power and money, the smaller God got in my life. The more I had, I had more insulation. I had more money. I could make my problems go away. God got smaller. I didn't realize that. I just continued on my journey, my path. One failed marriage. My daughter at the time, three and a half. She says, she was angry. She says to me, you never even cried because I didn't feel it. It was as if my heart was closing. It was as if I had no heart. And after 15 years with that company and all the sacrifices that I had to make to make it to what I thought was the top, the door shut and it was time for me to leave. And a new journey I went. And I remember when you stripped away the car, you stripped away the title, stripped away the power and all of the money, I'm standing there in front of my little girl who has about six at the time. And I tell her I'm no longer with the company. And she looks at me, beautiful brown eyes, tears starting to well up. And she says, but if you're not Crystal Parker, vice president, who will you be? Man, as mom's in the room, I'm looking at you, you're going, oh, that's got to be so painful to hear your daughter say that. Yeah. But it wasn't painful to me because I was in an identity crisis. I didn't know who I was. And why would I expect her to see me as mom? So God was leading me to a place that I envisioned like a cliff. He was calling me into a deeper place where I needed to trust and depend on him and him alone. And I remember looking over the edge of that cliff, feeling led to take those steps, to start my business, to walk with him. And I did what anybody else would do. I retreated from the edge of that cliff because it was so <laughs> scary. And I ran back to what I thought was comfortable, what I knew. And I ran as far as I could. Five years later, through a series of things, of unfortunate events, God put me right back there on that cliff again. Five years later, I'm forced to look at it. And it's scary, y'all. And he was calling me out to take that step. And I was afraid. But guess what? Through prayer, 
I was able to make that first step. And I remember screaming at the top of my lungs, apple caro dokia, apple caro dokia. And what that means is I press forward, forgetting what's mm. behind me, stretching, pressing toward the goal that God has for me. Philippians 3, 13, 14. I was straining to leave behind the past to go into the direction God was calling me. And what that required was a submission like I had never experienced before. Wow. One of the things, Beth, that I did to prepare for this talk today was I surveyed several of our Christian Chamber members. I know that business people that are successful, specifically Christ following, have had to submit to God a part of themselves to get where they are. God broke it down through countless conversations in the Christian chamber over the past two weeks. He broke it down to be able to share with you three things that I believe you need to submit to elevate in 2022 and experience elevation in a way that you've never experienced it before. And wow. I can't wait to share it with you what those and are. And we can't wait to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Now, to illustrate the first one, I'm going to ask you guys a question and see if you can get the answer. If anybody can get it, type it in the chat. I see you guys at Palm Beach, you know, if anybody has it. What's the one thing proven to boost your immune system, prevent weight gain, strengthen your heart, improve your mood, increase productivity, increase your exercise performance, improve your memory, help prevent cancer, reduce stress and reduce inflammation. What's the one thing? Fasting. Fasting, fasting. okay, thank you. It's not fasting, but uh, now that makes my mood really grumpy if I'm fasting, my friend. <laughs> 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 I get a little grumpy. The Lord's calling me deeper with him. It's sleep, it's sleep. So when you close your eyes and rest, your body does these amazing things. And there's no work required on your part when you sleep. That's why people that snore bless your heart. I never snore. Uh, you can't help it when you're asleep, you're unconscious. And wow. what I believe that God, number one thing that you need to submit in order to experience elevation is control. Wow. This one came up over and over and over again when I surveyed our members. You've got to relinquish control to God of the outcome, the timing, your plans, the results, the gain, whatever it is that you have and fully would like to have happen, you've got to let go. Oh, man. Every single person that can hear my voice is chosen on purpose for a purpose. You've heard it said before, and I can't say it enough. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies you. You can't control the outcome. Only God can. God is the author and giver of everything everywhere. He is the maker of everything. Nothing was made that has been made outside of the presence of God. That includes you. And the outcomes are his. I see so many people holding on so tight, thinking that they've got the answers, thinking it has to be this way. You're fighting the wrong battle. You've got wow. to relinquish control to God. And that's something I had to learn when I became the president of the Christian Chamber. When I came in, I wasn't expecting that. First of all, I wasn't qualified. I've never done anything like that. I think there's probably a lot of people that are doing things you're not qualified for. <laughs> <laughs> and I came in with a- You hear that nervous laugh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I heard it. I Some heard of it. you didn't even make a sound, but I, I know you're there. I know, I know it. There. I know it. <laughs> yeah. And I came in, I was unqualified. And what I didn't know was I thought I was unprepared, but God had prepared me. 
I came in with a corporate background into a 501c6, a nonprofit type of environment. And the, the Christian chamber at the time had a rich legacy and a rich history and beautiful members. But unfortunately, through a cycle of COVID and challenges, the organization was on decline. And I took a look at what we had here. And of course, I go back to my experience. I'm like, we don't have any money. We don't have this. We need more members. We need these things and all the things that the world would tell you. I even got into this crazy game of comparing the Christian chamber to some of the big chambers. I thought maybe we were going to be more like a Bible study. And God was saying, no, no, trust me and let me do something new. He will make streams in the wasteland if you allow him. But it was outside of anything that I can control. So it, it pushed me into a place of 100% submission to God and his will for the, chamber, the Christian chamber and for me. While I knew I was supposed to be there, I knew that I didn't have what I needed, at least in my mind, but God did, I had God. So I had to rely fully on him. I think a lot of times when we set goals and we have these deadlines and these plans that we try so hard to do it all in our own and how we think it's supposed to be done. But if we don't leave room for God to work, you're only going to get something that's man-made. And something that's man-made can be taken away. Something that's God-made and God-breathed cannot fail. So really surrendering your control to God. One of the verses I love and I want to share with you is John 15. 1 through 10 is beautiful. I highly encourage you to read that, John 15, 1 through 10. But this is remaining in him. He says, I am the branch and you are the vine. He's the vine. If you remain in him, then the branch can bear fruit and all things. What I see, think about this if you're visual like me, is there's branches that are laying on the ground. And he talks about that. Apart from me, you can do nothing. When those branches separate from the vine, what happens to them? They dry up, they get raked up, and they get put in the fire somewhere. There's a lot of branches that I see laying around that have lost that connection with Christ. What I love about the verse also, specifically when it comes to letting go and letting God control, is that he will clean the branch. He will get rid of the excess. That's hard for a lot of people. There's some of you in here today that need to let go of some things that maybe it's, maybe it's an addiction. Maybe you need to let go of something that's not serving you well, that you feel like this is the only thing I've got to hold on to this. Maybe you need to let go and let God remain in him. Think of just like what it means to rest and to sleep. You get so much more than when you're trying to do it in your own spirit. We see it in the Bible with the woman with the jars of oil. I love this story. She just lost her husband and her husband, he died and he owed a lot of money. And so they were coming to take her sons into slavery. And she was asked, what do you have? And she says, I have just a little bit of oil. Don't you know that she was told to go gather jars and all those jars were filled with oil? She gathered enough jars according to her faith. It's not about the jars or the oil. It's about she focused on what she had and allowed God to provide her with what she needed. Some of us need to stop focusing on what we don't have and who we're not and how we're going to control it and focus on the one source that can provide it. The one that will never fail you nor forsake you and the one that does not know how to fail. You're this here. is so awesome. I, I am just so blessed already. I have to interject as mm -hmm. you were speaking. Uh, when I, I had the pleasure and, and the privilege of kicking us off this month and this is going to go on throughout the year. I tried to switch it up for next month God said, no, our platform for February and all but one position in March is packed already. 
with presenters like yourself to speak on this topic because there's so much. And we want to keep each of our uh, GCBM member sponsors and community encouraged to be able to understand that you experience elevation, uh, new mercies every day from Mm -hmm. glory to glory. But where Mm -hmm. the point, and then I want you to continue, is when I opened us up and I turned back to my notes when I spoke, and God deals with me with acronyms. And my E in elevation, eject the excess, you know, because it's weighing you down. Wow. It's, you know, and when I'm, I'm like, oh my God, and I'm writing a book, I would just be transparent today because you're all in my book. I'm like, well, she's supposed to be the co-author or has she already written what you've given me to write? But, but eject the excess. And wow. if you think about it with the plane, there's a reason that your luggage has to be within certain measurements and weight and all of those things that weigh us down, you know, and, and, and the opportunity, I'm just going to just, you know, revisit something she said about asleep. I love Bernice came close. She said positive attitude and rest. And the opportunity for us to think, it's like a, I'm talking about elevation and you're talking about rest and sleep, you know, doing nothing basically is what the mind could possibly equate as an oxymoron. But God gives the foolish things of the world to Mm. confound the wise. And I heard you talking about your downloads that you've received and when Mm -hmm. he awakens you in the middle of the Mm -hmm. night. Mm-hmm. Because the the closer to you get to God, the more that you can hear from Him, and the more that He can share with you. Yes. Thank you so much. Wow. Please continue. Wow! Oh my I, God! I, I didn't I didn't see Bernice's comment, but uh, hi, Bernice. Thanks. That was, she was really close. That's perfect. Yeah. You're it's so my right. Sister. And, and, yeah, I, mine too. She's our sister. Yeah. She came to She's the our sister. We love her. There That's right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so so to wrap up the number one thing is on control is is just like sleep, to your point, Beth, we've got to release control so that we can we've got to submit our control and our earthly hands and mind to God so that He can have control because His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, His ways are higher than our ways. And we need Him and we need to invite Him in to take control. To t- Jesus take the wheel. We've heard it before, but Jesus I take the wheel. Mean it. We've got to leave the control to Him. The second thing, get ready. Some of you guys are not going to like this. Second thing that I want you to submit to be able to elevate in 2022 is your comfort. This came up a couple of times, uh, several times actually, when I was talking with members. The greatest enemy of success is success. Now, why is that? Because we tend to get very comfortable. And what we need to do as believers in God is we have got to be willing to be uncomfortable. And this all came up at a Christian chamber meeting about three or four weeks ago. The host was asking the audience in there, how many of you are uncomfortable? And less than half of the room raised their hand. And then I said, that's wrong. We've got to be uncomfortable. If your comfort If you're comfortable, it's almost like bondage because nothing grows in comfort. Mm. Nothing can grow in you being comfort. I remember standing over, looking down in that cliff and I retreated back to comfort. And I had five years lost, five years that I can't get back, five painful years to go right back there. I was fighting the wrong fight. I was chasing comfort. And in reality, I needed to be trusting God. You see this in the Bible a lot uh, when it comes to talking about comfort. Um, And it even says it, James 2.14, faith without works is dead. Well, it is uncomfortable when you have got to go out and trust God in faith. 
Let me tell you, because faith basically is there's no guarantee. There's no prescription. There's no written recipe for it. God gives the vision and then he says, go. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> How am I going to do that? And I, I, I got to thinking about the young man that the young rich man, he approached Jesus and he's like, how do I get, you know, to the father? How do I get to heaven? And I've done this and I've done that and I've done that. And he was told to give away all of his money. That was the one thing he hadn't surrendered. That's the one thing he hadn't submitted, but that's also the one thing that kept him comfortable. And y'all, he walked away. He walked away sad. He couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. On Friday, at one of our Christian Chamber events, there was a young man there named Joshua, or Josh, and I don't know if he's on, Josh. Josh was blind, legally blind, and completely blind, and he lived in another state, and he was visiting Orlando, friends. When he came to Orlando, he got under uh, a church, he got under the teaching of Pastor Don Cousins of uh, Discovery Church in Orlando. And he heard from God, you are to move to Orlando and be on mission. Now think about this. This young man is blind. And now God's telling him to move out from out of state into an unknown place and do what? He didn't tell him all that, but he was obedient. He made the steps. He was uncomfortable. Now, how many of us are in our little comfort couch in our comfort shoes and our comfortable life. This is a huge step. Imagine being blind, no family, and you're going to a strange land. Now, guess what God stirred up in Josh? Once he got here, he started living on mission and God revealed to him that there's 800,000 churches in the U.S. and less than 10% of those churches serve and have programs for the disabled. God stirred in his heart that he is to go to these churches and help open programs for disabled people that want to attend church. All because he chose being uncomfortable, he chose faith, and he chose the direction that most people wouldn't. I tried not to. I didn't want to go out on my own. I wanted to retreat to a job or retreat to all the things that the world told me would make me comfortable. But God kept calling me out and calling me out. How many of you are standing on that same cliff looking over something that you know that you should be doing, but it's scary, it's unfamiliar, and you're afraid to make that first step? I'm talking to you. Make the step. God will meet you. He cannot meet you if you don't take that first step. He can't. He's waiting for you. He needs you to make the step and he'll meet you there. So that's number two in this whole thing. And then there's one more. And I don't know if you're ready for it yet, Beth. No, no, you know what? <laughs> you know what? Let me just let before you go to that and lay that on us. Let's just deal with this for a second. Okay. Oh my okay. God. Submit <laughs> comfort. And I want to, you know, there was a reason I've been sending this book to one of our GCBN members, Brandy Thomas. And it's not gotten out of my, I've got my own copy. It's the prayer of Jabez. Okay. And everybody is familiar with that one little prayer that he prayed in second Chronicles. Okay. I believe. And the opportunity that made me think of it. And I started, I put it in my purse again today to try to get this thing to the post office to mail to her <laughs> because she was telling me she was praying the prayer. Now the opportunity here in this first Chronicles 4 9, the opportunity here is this. When you are talking about submitting comfort, mm -hmm. there's pain that we don't want to face. The mm -hmm. reason we don't want to submit comfort because we want to at all costs avoid pain. Correct. We don't want to feel it. We don't want it. The cold brings pain. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, and Beth Copeland's talking to the, you know, <laughs> herself first. You know, on days that um, it's cold outside, 
I may or may not want to go to the gym. I may think of different reasons why I'm not leaving this fireplace. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I may never interject the fireplace. There are different reasons, but I don't want to get cold because I don't, I don't want to go outside because I don't want to get cold. If I get cold, I might be uncomfortable. I don't care how much clothing I've got to put. I've got to at some point peel it off and I'm going to experience the cold. This is the thing that I love that you're sharing with us. When we get to the place to understand that if there's no pain, there's no gain, Hmm. you know, and when we get to the place to know and to understand that God's got us protected. I love what you said about living and, and making sure that we step out and I call it on faith. One of our GCB and corporate sponsors at our community partners and corporate sponsors launching back in November, he got up, be careful who you give your mic to. And he says, describe me as someone that lives life on the ledge. And I've been Mm -hmm. pondering that. Mm -hmm. That's where God wants us to live. If you don't get close enough to the ledge and allow that one day, he's going to push you over. See, Mm -hmm. that's when we get to the point that we know Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all of their ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If he pushes you over the edge, it simply means that he's going to be there to catch you. Mm -hmm. And so the opportunity to move forward and to experience elevation in the greater in life is that we have to get outside of our comfort zone. Because how do you expect to experience something different? Oh, God, I want this. I want to I want to experience this year greater than last year. But I'm doing the same things this year that I've already started off doing those that I was doing last year. I didn't make my bed last year. I don't make it this year. Now, just start <laughs> with elevation right there. I'm, I'm serious. You mm-hmm. know, so so there you go. I just had to keep us coming, oh, Crystal. Pump, pump, okay, pump. keep. Okay, Come here on. we go. This is great. Thank uh, you. You're great. I love it. I, I love this commentary. This is so fun. I'm having the time of my life, Beth Copeland. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys. Here's the third one. This one. Uh, this one's a little out there. So first thing we're going to give up is control. Submit control. We're going to submit our comfort zone. And then the third thing that the Lord showed me is we're going to submit our conscious expectations. Okay. Conscious expectations. Let me, let me, let me break this down for you. I was just at the beach and as I was standing at the beach, I was thinking about God and just the vast beauty of the beach. Imagine a teaspoon. And for the guys or ladies that don't cook, just a a spoon. Imagine if you spooned up a little bit of that ocean water in that spoon. That's about how much we know of God in the whole ocean is God. We know about this much. Think about that. But yet we try to take God and put him in a box in our conscious mind. We try to make sense of God from what we can understand. And God is so much bigger than that. So I've got a perfect example of, of, of God. Um, have you ever heard of the term unconsciously competent? You're unconsciously uh-huh. competent. So just a couple of weeks ago, you guys may have heard of it. There was a helicopter crash and they were calling it a miraculous helicopter crash. And the reason it was miraculous was number one, because the helicopter that crashed literally missed the building by inches. It missed any people that were on the streets and all of the passengers in the helicopter that crashed lived. The pilot of 29 years had been a pilot, had never had a crash or accident before. And all of the news stations are interviewing him in the hospital. And here's what he said. I love this. He said this. He said, I wish I could remember what I did because I would Monday morning quarterback myself. He said, God was my co-pilot. He didn't remember. Another great example of this is my mom. My mom's a pianist and a good friend of the family passed away. 
and they asked my mom to play a compilation of songs for the funeral. And the church was packed. She was so sad, she was grieving, but she also wanted to give this gift to the family. She said, I remember playing the first note and the last, I don't remember what happened. Afterwards, people were coming to her saying that God was speaking through her music, that, that, that they know that Jim's in a good place because of the songs that my mom played. And the last example I'll give you of unconscious competence is when I was writing my book, I've, I've got a book, it's called The Best Robot Wins. It ain't personal, it's just business. And it's about parables and, and how to structure your business. But when I was writing my book, I worked with a Christian Chamber member, Jacqueline Lynn. I don't see her on, but she might be on. And I would write and then she would airbrush. She helped me keep on time. She would ask questions and really kind of just massage the work that I did. And so we had the system going back and forth of writing. And I want you to keep in mind, I was launching the U.S. Christian Chamber Expo running Central Florida. I'm a professor. I have my own business and I'm a single mom. And this book came and we were going to write it in three months, which is crazy. So we're going back and forth and I'm not qualified to write a book. I, I, I tell you, every job evaluation I ever had was you need to improve your writing. Like I'm significantly uh, deficient in that respect. And God's calling me to write this book, and I don't really even know what I'm going to write it on. So we're going back and forth, swapping chapters back and forth. And about two weeks or a week and a half later, she goes, oh, I forgot to send you back chapter three. And I go, oh, I thought I had everything. I'm reading it. I don't remember writing it. So much so that I went back to see, did I really send this to her? Like, did I really write this? God used me to pour into this book. God wants to use us, but if we're trying so hard to calculate and make sense, we see it in the Bible and the feeding of the 5,000. James was trying to calculate how much wages it would take to feed all the people in the crowd when Jesus said to, to feed them. All they had was five loaves and two fish, and Jesus blessed it with God and there, y'all, there were enough for 12 doggy bags at the end of the day for each disciple. Everybody was fed. That's the kind of math that we need. We, we can't explain or understand in our human mind. We've been so conditioned to believe that one plus one equals two, that our conscious expectations hold us captive to experiencing the true miracle of the Holy Spirit and of Christ in our life. So when you submit your conscious expectations to God, you're able to receive abundance, receive miracles, receive supernatural blessings, and here it is, receive the mind of Christ. That's this, the key. This is so awesome. The mind of Christ is what we receive mm -hmm. and everything falls out of that. One of the things mm -hmm. that I'm thinking when you said that, I heard Oprah Winfrey say that money was never her desired outcome. Mm -hmm. Money was never the opportunity that she sought. And I'm comparing that to what you said, the way God if, if we seek ye first, I mean, mm -hmm. this is simple. Matthew 6, 3, 3. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and mm -hmm. his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. Yes. And when you say that, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm putting myself all the way out here. I see you, Tyrese, out there making a comment about my book, okay? And thank you for all that are attended, and I also want to take, thank you for our GCBM members that are present here today as well in this mix, and also over on Facebook Live. And I'm so excited. My assistant, Lisa Muth, has joined us for a purpose in just a little bit. She's going to handle something my outstanding virtual assistant we're going to do something in just a little bit and I needed her help and she's shown up on the scene so we can make <laughs> this happen so don't leave us now guys there's something great coming but the opportunity for this is is, is what I'm about to say is here is if we would lend ourselves to the Lord and mm -hmm. that's what she in a nutshell she had to close this month out to prepare us for 
to seal what's been said and mm -hmm. to propel us forward for where we go in next month. Because this is what exactly 100% that is in my heart that God has articulated through this beautiful dynamic soul today mm -hmm. is that he wants to give you more. Yeah. But you've got to be able to surrender what? Did she tell us? Tell us what she surrender said. That we have to set control. We got to surrender control, control, but we've got to also tell us some of the other ones. Surrender Somebody comfort. else. Surrender. surrender your conscious expectations. Conscious expectations, and but it was receive. comfort. The comfort, comfort. That's what it right. is. Control, yeah. comfort, conscious. And, and all see. I, I love the way yeah. God deals with that. Yeah. But the conscious expectation is that if you'll do it with not a motive other than to serve mm -hmm. and to please God. That's right. Just obedience is all that he's asking and not worry about the outcome. And it's going to be a challenge in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, that's, that's, that's the opportunity for the discomfort. It's always going to be a challenge because why? Jeremiah 12, 5 tells us about it. If you run with with footmen and they weary you high in the world in the land of Jordan are you going to run with horses see the difference in footmen and horses is what how many legs mm -hmm. you got to grow a couple of legs my friend <laughs> if you really want to go where you say you do if you really want to become greater let it be for greater use mm -hmm. for his glory right He's got you. I promise you. He has all of us. Mm -hmm. The servant is worthy of his hire. Yes. God has not forgotten about you. Mm. You know, you ask if you're comparable. I ask, are you humiliated yet? That's the way I say it. Why? Because it's a derivative of humility. Being humble is hu humility is what? You're close. You're getting close if you humiliate it. That's Humility right. is what in the word? It's before honor. Mm. Yeah. And Humility. I think that's a, it's so true, Beth, because when I was in corporate, I had no humility at all. I thought I was in control of it. And, and I thought I was the reason that I was so powerful. And I, God was less and I was more. And, and I realized and learned that I must decrease so that he can increase. And I'll land the plane here with you guys um, from my part and then just turn it back. But the, the mind of Christ in the, in the business, in the workplace, in your personal life, allows you to see hidden things that are, will be revealed to you. Having the mind of Christ, and it's available to all of us, he tells us that in 2 Corinthians 2, 9. It allows you to ex ex access the spirit of God, hearing from him, waking you up, being on mission. You will be able to understand things that the spirit can't. I just wrote about this in our newsletter and I titled the newsletter, Are You Out of Your Mind? Yes, thank God I am. People think I'm crazy of the world for trying to start the U.S. Christian Chamber of Commerce. They think that's absolutely insane. But here's what he tells us. I don't want to miss this. I want to get to the word. 2 Corinthians 2, 9 through 16 says, however, this is the mind of Christ, y'all. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived. The things God has prepared for those who love him. These are the things God has revealed to us by the spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, thank God, but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand, so that we may understand what God has freely given to us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit taught words. The person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God, but considers them, guess what? Foolishness. 
<laughs> and the person with the spirit makes judgment about all things. But such a person is not subject to mere human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind, the mind of, of Christ. Christ. And the way to get that is to submit your control, to submit your comfort, and to submit your conscious expectations, seeking him first in all things. I, I'll end with just a, a very brief story. My dog got into poison once. And she was about 40 pounds, went back and forth to the vet that day. They couldn't quite figure it out. Finally, they realized. They said, your dog's going to have a better chance to live if you take her home than to leave her in the kennel. And I, a single mom, have a little girl. We just moved. I'm like, oh, gosh, if this dog dies, I, it's going to be horrible. But I said, let's take her home. That night, and God woke me up with this this morning, so I know this message is, is for somebody. That night, I don't know if you've ever seen anything fight for their life, but I've never seen anything like I saw. This dog was gnawing and gnashing and rolling and moaning and groaning and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting for life. I've never experienced something so primal in my life and seeing that fight. And the dog lived. Thank you, God. What God said that I need to deliver today is some of you are fighting so hard on the wrong things. Mm. Some of mm. you are so far off path that this message, this day is a new day for you to renew your mind, to discipline yourself, to look at the edge of that cliff. And today, today, make the conscious decision to make the step. He'll meet you. He will never fail you nor forsake you. He's waiting for you. Submit control. Submit your comfort. And submit what you can consciously put God in the box for. And trust. And step. And I love you. And I know that your leader loves you too. And what God has for you is something so special. And when you get on mission and you figure it out, I pray that you'll drop me a line. And let me know what God's placed in your heart to do. So when you submit these things, you get the, the heart and the mind of Christ. And you can yell at the top of your lungs, Apokaradokia, strain for what's ahead. Forget what's behind you and press on for what God has called you and only you for. I'm Crystal Parker and business is my sport. Thank you, Beth, for having me. <laughs> Girl, did she deliver. You did not disappoint at all. God has a plan. Y'all say it with me. What is your response? God has a plan and I am a part of it. I Amen. love that phrase. I've coined it. I put it on cups. I put it on t-shirts. I got to send you one of each. Please. Listen, outstanding, my friend. Thank God you. is so good. And, and the way you summarized it and pulled it all together, God, listen, was speaking. And I know for him to give you that about the dog and the story, it is for someone, but not just for someone. I believe there's something in all of it. I've got so many confirmations and affirmations. When you talked about 1 Corinthians 12, 2, 9, I have not seen, of course, I'm King James, a baby. Eyes not seen, <laughs> ears not heard, neither is in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But, mm -hmm. you know, the thing that you get down to, but he has revealed them through us, through his spirit. Why? Mm -hmm. The spirit searches yeah. the things of God. We've got to get to the point where we lay aside every weight that so easily besets us. She said to us today, and I'm getting to Lisa, okay, that there are things that we're fighting that we shouldn't even fight. You're in the wrong fight. Mm -hmm. Listen, elevate. It's yeah. elevation. Let yeah. them win. I, you know, I did an article on let them people win. Yeah, <laughs> agree with your adversary quickly. And I said it just like that. Let them people win. Yeah. Okay? Because you're fighting. You That's keeping you distracted. Mm -hmm. Keeping you decreased. Yes. Well, you've got to increase God in your mm -hmm. life. Oh, Crystal, oh. I can't wait. We're going to talk about part two. 
<laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Y'all, I'm so sorry that I didn't get to all of these comments in the chat. Thank you, thank you. And I know Lisa has some that are on Facebook. She said something. I know Ridgely's out there. But what I'd like to do, and um, I think Angelisa's, Angelisa's here, or maybe Angela, but Angela's here. I don't know. But there are so many people that she will miss, miss mentioning over there that are on uh, Facebook Live. So we appreciate it. But Lisa's here. Say hello to everyone, Lisa. Let me tell you why I asked Lisa to come from Men and Facebook Live over here. Because Crystal has a book out, okay? And we want to give away a couple of copies of Crystal's book. And we want to thank you those that have joined us today. And so a select few of you, uh, two of you will receive a copy uh, free, gratis of GCBN. And so what Lisa's gonna do, she's already taken all the names from Facebook that we knew of, because sometimes over on Facebook, people won't tell us who they are, but we can see that you're there because of the numbers. Okay. <laughs> So you're going to miss out unless you kind of speak up. Um, so the opportunity is this. She's been in the wheel wherever it lands. We need you to chat us your email address. And then we're going to be able to uh, get you a copy of Crystal's book to say thank you for joining us and also for our opportunity to sew into Crystal's vision and, and just to support her. Okay, Lisa, go for it, lady. All right, we're ready. Bernice, okay. Oh my God, okay. Okay, let's do one more since Bernice is my sister. I want to qualify, disqualify her. We're going to go ahead and give her a copy, Lisa, but okay. let's do one other. Liz, how about that? Liz Cole. Thank you guys so much. And thank you, Lisa. Y'all, she is so amazing. She, it's because of her, you know, that I'm able to do some of the things. Look at Angela. You know, Lisa Muth, I'm telling you, virtual assistant, entrepreneur, extra, uh, extra near. She is just outstanding. And I'm just privileged and thankful to have you um, as a part of the GCBN team. Crystal, what do I say? Oh, my God. This was oh my fun. God. It, this is so fun. It, it is so much fun when you're walking in your purpose and you mm. understand who you are and who you are in him. When you walk that out, it yeah. becomes so much fun. You just, it's not like work at all. It's just mm. an enjoyment. And, and the idea that I hear is similar to mine is you just want others to experience yeah. what God is revealing in you. And so it's our opportunity to grasp that. That's our understanding at Georgia Christian Business Network. Our vision to put God back in business is the holistic approach. Just because it says Georgia, we're working on that, okay? It's probably going to say global Zoom. But we have a guardian sponsor out of Dallas, Texas. We, got a, we have a provider sponsor out of Missouri. Kim Smith is on a call with us. Thank you so much. Kim for joining us today. She's our one of our provider sponsors. And then we have Lisa is, although she's my VA, this is what, this is humility. Okay. She's a provider sponsor as well. And she lives in middle Georgia. And so the opportunity is, I want to say to each of you, check our website out www.gcbnetwork.com. We have great opportunities for membership, sponsorship, and we would love to invite you to the GCBN family. Where it doesn't matter where you live. Listen, I told Crystal this morning, my call, one of my calls this morning was Lady Addie, and she lives in the UK. And we're doing some things together. And I mean, God just has an awesome plan. And 
And I mean, it's amazing what we were discussing this morning and that'll come later for you. But the opportunity without speaking too long is we want to help you and we need your help to undergird the vision that we have to put God back in business. Tomorrow's Wellness Wednesday, just like today, we have a Wellness Wednesday virtual platform that you can join in. We have two outstanding licensed professionals that are both GCBN corporate sponsors that usually take the platform like Rich Oswald and who is an LPC and Pamela Bridgman Bartell that's an LCSW but tomorrow we have a special guest that is going to come in and close out they've been talking about hope all week long excuse me all month long we have an outstanding GCBN member, Karen Harrison, that's going to join the platform tomorrow and talk about hope for your health. Health. She's a nutritionist because we're talking about elevation this year and we're looking at the holistic approach. That's the way GCBN does it. So we cannot leave our health out. But next week, we have an outstanding lineup starting us off in February on the Take Charge Tuesday platform is Gladys Aguay. She is so outstanding. Some of you know Gladys, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> it's gonna be just like, it's just like a snowball and it's getting bigger and it's getting bigger and it's mm -hmm. getting bigger. And next month, we understand that that enemy doesn't want you to win. And so on the Wellness Wednesday platform where we talk about any gamut of things, I said hope, we've talked about narcissism, uh, narcissistic behavior. Well, guess what's following? Next month, as we continue on Tuesdays to talk about elevation on Wellness Wednesday, we're talking about confidence. And I told you I was writing about elevation simultaneously. I'm just going to be real with it. I am so focused. I'm writing about Godfidence, too. Mm -hmm. And that's a term that God introduced me years ago. And so I'm going to introduce that on Wednesday on the platform as well. Don't forget about our tape charge, excuse me, our Friday new nuggets in our Facebook group. Uh, whether or not you are uh, interested in becoming a member, at least join our GCBN Facebook group, okay? And Lisa, can you just put that in the chat? You about, see, why do I even, <laughs> I am so blessed. She's gonna make me shout this morning. I didn't even know, I'm so focused on what I'm seeing. I didn't even know she's over there having her way. Okay, <laughs> so this is the deal. Those that have won, please make sure that we have your email addresses and then we'll correspond with you. I promise we will deliver the packages. Crystal, it's been wonderful. I am so excited about just our relationship and what God's doing and what he's going to do as we continually submit our mm -hmm. control, yes. you know, we've got to get out of his way because if I'm going to control it, you know, why do I even need him? Right. Okay. Our comfort, get from under that blanket, yeah. get from front of that fireplace. Okay. <laughs> That's me. Okay. I'm on, I've been on a 21 day fast. Y'all know how I like Westerns, the GCBN folk haven't seen a Western since it'll be 21 on Saturday. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. I mean, God is good. Sometimes you got to let it go. And uh -huh. then conscious expectations. Oof. Oh my God. <laughs> let it go. All of that. Thank you I so much, that. Crystal. Oh, well, we're excited to be inviting you into the chamber uh, very soon. And uh, that's in the works. So you guys haven't seen the last of Beth Copeland and the GCB. Awesome. Yeah, God's bringing us together. We're doing great things and he's doing great things through you. And I mean, your heart, I love you so much. I'm just so thankful. And could I close in prayer? Yes. That's would you okay. do that? But let me yes. send one shout out to Bernice Lohman. Where because is she? that she's, she was over, I think. Is, did she join on, on Facebook? She's on Lisa? Facebook. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, thank you. And thank you, Lisa, for what you've done. I'm going to let you close in prayer, but let me send this. Bernie Sloman, and this is what I want to tell you. Speak of people, connect with people that will speak of you in a room where you're not present mm -hmm. and say, I know who you need to see about that. Krista Parker. 
Okay, because that defines Bernice Lohman. Mm -hmm. Outstanding Christian business owners. We've got an opportunity coming up in spring for her to come up to the GCBN live in person here. We're going to do some great things with Bernice Lohman. But she's the reason that we connected. Look for those people that God has assigned to you and those people that you're just taking on, they hanging on to your coattail. They're not supposed to be there. Let them go. Cut your coat if you have to. Close us <laughs> in prayer, Crystal. Thanks, everyone. Oh, glorious Lord. Father God, thank you. Thank you for this work that you're doing. Georgia Christian Business Network, Beth Copeland, all of the beautiful people that took time to be mm-hmm. here today. Thank you for their hands, for their labor. And Father, I just pray that this word that was given today just be an anchor to each person, that, that the seed be planted. And Father, let it be harvested at the time that you deem appropriate for each person. If nothing else, allow them to chew and look and search their heart for ways that they can fully submit control, submit their comfort, and submit their conscious expectations to you. Help them to really truthfully search with the light, the light of Christ, their heart, for areas that they can give more to you so that you can grow and shine through them. We thank you for being the author and giver of everything, that you loved us so much that you sacrificed such a sacrifice so that we could be with you, that we could know you, that we could have everlasting life with you. Thank you for the gift of salvation, God. Mm. We know that you didn't have to, but you loved us so much. Let your example be our example to reach people for the kingdom through our works, through our vocation, through our, our hearts, through our daily conversations, Lord. Let us find ways to reach more for you. In your holy and glorious name, we pray. We praise your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 What were you Thank saying, you. Lacey? I was just saying amen. 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 Praise right. God. Right. All right. Did you learn it? God has a plan. Yes. And I am a part of it. I go walk in. Yes. Amen. Enjoyed it. <laughs> Thank you for your prayers and your blessings to us today, Crystal. See you all. Hope to see you again. God bless you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, Miss Crystal. <laughs>